Palace plus 225, clean sheet the weekend, three points. Spurs, a failure to score, and yet they're still at plus 115 favourites. Now we're looking at goals, over two and a half is at minus 110, which means the under two and a half is also at minus 110. The draw should be, could be a runner at plus 240. Marco, here, take this away because I don't know which home side's turning up. I don't know what away side's turning up. Maybe cards. Is this a game where you could see that they could get out of hand again? Could do. There's enough characters on both teams to to get involved and in, in, in amongst it. But um, for me, it's it's quite straightforward, really. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of coming on and parroting the same stuff every week. But it's the same bet with, with Spurs. It didn't land against Villa on New Year's Day, but um, you know, Spurs failing to score at home for the first time this season. They weren't very good at all in the final third. But um, yeah, I'm happy to back over two and a half goals and both teams to score at plus 110. Uh, because for me, nothing's really changed with Tottenham. I still can't trust them. Certainly not at those kind of prices. They're starting matches too slowly. They're conceding first. They're conceding two goals or more uh, often. Um, they're just looking a little bit dysfunctional um, in both boxes. Um, it's now seven Premier League games where they've conceded two goals or more and conceded the opening goal. Uh, in that sequence, the expected goals average against is, is well above 1.5. That shows it's not being particularly unlucky or unjust. Um, there's something systematically wrong about what they're doing defensively and to keep just four clean sheets. For a team chasing a top four finish isn't good enough. Uh, it's quite surprising. And you can understand why now Tottenham fans are growing more and more frustrated by Antonio Conte and his negativity. So uh, it's worth noting too that three of those four clean sheets came against the worst attacks in the league, Everton, Wolves and Forest. So I can absolutely see Palace scoring in this match, of course. Uh, they fired just one blank at Selhurst Park all season. Um, that was when Fulham were playing the you know, bulk of the game against nine men. Uh, but they have scored in 21 of 27 home games in the Premier League under Patrick Vieira. Bounced back from that defeat with uh, a really impressive display at Bournemouth. Uh, I know they've got a, a stronger central defensive partnership now that Anderson and Guihi have been reunited. But Mitchell is still suspended at left back, which means uh, Ward has to fill in there at left back rather than right back. And defensively, they have been a little bit open themselves. They've kept just four clean sheets, just one at uh, Selhurst Park all season two. Uh, I think I mentioned on the last show that um, their midfield uh, can look a little bit unbalanced because they are trying to pigeon a few too many creative influences in there and it does leave them a little bit uh, exposed at times. And I think uh, you know Spurs still do have that quality in forward areas. I'm not sure on Kulusevski's uh, fitness or, or availability here, but he's obviously pretty key too. So, uh, yeah, goals at both ends and three or more would be uh, my angle of attack here. Uh, it's been a wage of us one in 10 of Tottenham's 17 Premier League games, uh, including five of the last six. Uh, it's not often Spurs don't score. Uh, they weren't great against Villa, but I would expect them to trouble Palace here. So over to enough goals and BTTS at plus money. Yeah, listen, I just couldn't get this game right, Cinch. I just don't know what Palace is turning up because they were dog awful at home in the uh, London derby. And here we go again, another London derby. But Spurs, I spoke to some Spurs fans on the way home from the Villa game and they just said they just do not know what's going on with so many of their players. Yeah, Tottenham look very lethargic and all over the place post-World Cup. I think they are suffering a bit from the fact they had a lot of players away. But in actual fact, it's a lot of what we've seen in the lead-up to the, the World Cup because it's now seven games in a row they've conceded two or more goals. So that isn't going to get you success when you're having to score three to win football matches. So there's a problem there defensively. But then the end of the other end of the pitch, they're the third highest scorers in the league with 33 in their 17 games. So with Palace only keeping four clean sheets as well themselves this season, just one clean sheet at home, I thought it was quite an easy bet for me to make the over two and a half goals, seeing as it's chalked up as 50-50. And I feel like it should be should be the favourite based, based, on, based on what I said there. Um, and you, you know you said you can't trust Palace. I think that's the beauty of backing overs. Is it doesn't necessarily need one team to, to sorry, it doesn't need both teams to contribute. It can just be one team because both games last season finished three 0 to the home side. So I'm happy to back the the overs. Um, just the you mentioned at the beginning about cards. Uh, yeah, cards is always a good bet. I think when Palace play Tottenham, Palace commit the second most fouls in the Premier League, and then they themselves are the most fouled team in the league. So there's always a chance that that will lead to a lot of free kicks and thus yellow cards. But unfortunately, it's a minus 160, both teams uh, to get at least two two cards. So it's a little bit short. Um, so you'd have to go shopping maybe to look at the two and a half line. Um, but generally, this is quite feisty. Wilfred Zahar has got a lot of history with uh, with Tottenham defenders and Tottenham fullbacks. So I could definitely see him, him being involved in, in cards. 
Yeah, I can also see this game uh, just springing to life. Maybe it's going to be a little bit boring early on. Well, Sean Mack says, no goal in the first 28 minutes. Yeah, I can see it being tight early on. But then once one of them scores, I think they've both got the uh, personnel to actually not lay down and get themselves back into the game. Let's have a little look at the official picks because I have not got one, uh, even though I probably do agree with my uh, my experts. And there's two ways to skin this cat. We've got over two and a half, and both teams to score at plus 110 for the award-winning owner. And over two and a half goals at minus 110 for Stinch. 